Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to run a simple Python program in a Docker container. So dealing with programming environment setup and differences from machine to machine is pretty annoying. And that's why I prefer to develop inside containers. They're the closest thing we have to deterministic builds for any kind of program. And really the simplest thing that I found for um, these kinds of infrastructure as code things, they work at small scale with one program or large scale with thousands of programs. And you don't have to go into the weeds of like Kubernetes or something. And so in this post, we'll walk through how to run a simple Python program in a Docker container. All right, first let's take a look at the Python program. And really it's very simple. It just prints hello world. So you run it, it prints out hello world. And here's main.py, it's just a print hello world. And so that's what it'll output. Now I'm just a random guy on the internet. So you should never just like trust what I say. So here I'm gonna prove it to you. Here I'm in my Hamy Labs example uh, project and we're in this little folder, simple Python Docker. I have a Docker file, main.py, readme and a requirements.txt. And so here we can see main.py, it really is just a hello world. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this Docker container. And we'll talk about this command in a second. And we can see that it prints out hello world. And so that's my proof that this actually works. All right, so this is the Python program. And now let's talk about how we run it with Docker. So I'm basically gonna assume that you already have Docker set up on your machine. If not, go do that. Docker has great installation guides. Um, probably want the you know little app thing on your machine like I have here, but that's outside the scope of this, this video. So go install Docker. Now, all we have to do is tell Docker how to create this container. And basically we do that with a Docker file. It tells Docker what steps to run and how to actually start the program. Um, this is very similar to like a package.json for JavaScript or like a .fs proj or .cs proj for .NET, C sharp and F sharp projects. It's basically just saying, what do I actually need to do to run this program? And so our Docker file is gonna do a few things. The first thing it's gonna do is clone an official Python image. And here we're using Python 3.12, but you can use a different version of that you want. And the code is down here as well. So we say, use the base Python image, and we say from Python 3.12, which opens up um, this image so that we can start configuring it. The next thing we're gonna do is copy our source code into the container so that it's actually inside of there and can run it. And we're gonna do that with this copy command um, dot dot. This basically just says copy everything in here into um, everything in here. So from our computer, into our container. The next thing we're gonna do is install any requirements as listed in our requirements.txt. Note that we're not actually using requirements.txt um, in our Python program, because all it's doing is printing hello world, but any reasonable Python program will be using um, these dependencies. So I think it's important to always include that because that's how you're actually gonna use this thing. And so basically it's just gonna say, you know, run pip install, um, no cache. We don't need a cache. It's gonna do dash r, which I think is recursive. Um, and then requirements.txt. I'm no Python expert, so don't hold me to what these flags mean. But essentially what we're doing is that we're installing all of the requirements. And then finally, with those installed, we need to actually run our Python program. And basically the way that we do that is we have this command. We would just do python dot slash main dot pi. And that is equivalent to this, like how you would actually run this on your own machine, python main dot pi. And so together what we've done is we make sure that Python's installed. We make sure that our program's in there so that it can run it. We install all of the requirements that are needed by our program. And then we start it um, as well. And then finally, the way that we run this is by just spinning up our Docker container. So inside your folder that has this, um, you can use this command. It's a bit convoluted, but the basis of it is it's just saying Docker run on the image that's here. And so basically what it does is it says, hey, go build the image that we currently have in our directory. I want you to remove any existing images that we have. And then I want you to open this in interactive mode, um, which for our case doesn't matter because it's just a program one and done, but you might want interactive mode if you're doing some sort of like command line interface or something like that. Next. So that, that should get you started running Python programs inside a Docker container. This is how I'm running a lot of my own experimental Python programs these days. Now that Replit removed its free tier, which I think is pretty sad and kind of kills its usefulness to me, but I understand they want to make some money. So, you know, we'll just do this stuff manually. Now, if you want the full project source code um, that I showed you here, uh, Hominians members get access to this project's full source code on GitHub, as well as dozens of other example projects. And so I can click here and show you that this is the exact same um, thing that I showed you and demoed to you. 
So if you want that, go check out how minions, um, but also the full source code is here. So you can just copy and paste it into your own files if you want. Now, if you like this post, you might also like build a simple result type in Python and why you should use them. Kind of an overview of results from other languages. Python's not super big on these kinds of like uh, helper types, but a lot of other languages are. And I think that's something that's pretty useful across programming languages and pieces of software. So here's how to make a simple one for yourself. You might also be interested in Python data class best practices and why you should use them. Python's type system is not really good. So we kind of have to rely on these other tools and concepts that they provide to you to try and get something that seems like type safety. And then you might also be interested in five reasons F -sharp is a great Python alternative for scripting side projects and enterprise applications. I love F -sharp for doing scripting things like this. I think it works better at small and large scale. And so here's a quick comparison against Python. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.